Hey guys, the original audio of the combo is lost, so I'm going to walk you through how I choose my composition instead. So as you can see, first thing I do is I watch the original clip, and then I start to recreate the clip to the best of my ability on my computer. And unfortunately, I'm not the best at doing these task recreations, so there are some differences in speed and, for example, the background color. But what I do is I finish the combo until I pause right here, and then I speed through and try and come up with a composition that I'm going to like. And there's a couple trial and error examples in this one, but I actually come up with this composition I'm about to come up a little bit off camera, but this is the composition I choose. And this is actually just how I start the painting. And from here on, I start to project the painting onto the canvas and I get started. So enjoy the rest of the video. Hello everyone, Soda here, and today I'm going to be doing an interview about this second painting you can see behind me. And joining me today is... Istzar. Thank you very much. And so Istzar, you are a player from Greece, which not a yeah. lot of people will know about. Can you just tell me who you main and how long you've been playing the game? So I've been playing the game for around one and a half years. Uh, started September 2016, and I main Captain Falcon because he's the only viable character in this game. <laughs> Perfect. Appar apparently so. And so we actually met at a tournament in Italy, which was, I think, really funny to think about that a, a Canadian and a Greek player met at the same tournament in Italy. It's all over the world. And so yeah. what I want to talk about first is actually the exposure that has been going on with your scene and how how you guys have grown. So a lot of players might know there was a Reddit post. Um, it was by a player named Nether Darkness. And in that Reddit post, it was named a plea from the Greek melee community. And so it talked a lot about somebody leaving and some of the struggles that the Greek scene was uh, about to go through. And could you just give me a brief rundown of what happened there? So what was going on at the time was um, there was a really big problem in the Greek scene. Um, I was about to leave, but the thing is I was the TO and I also had the only venue in Athens, right? So what was about to happen, we we're going to be left without a TO, without a venue. Uh, so we just asked uh, Reddit for some help, uh, give us some advice or... Uh, uh, show new players that there is a scene in Greece so they can attend the local scene and help out. What happened at the time was um, I was about to go to study the UK abroad, right? Never Darkness, the person who posted this Reddit post, was actually uh, the second TO here, the guy that was helping me the most, the guy that had the most interest in the scene other than me, right? He was really helping me advance and he was really helping it to go through the difficult times, you know, because every community in the start has some really, really rough times. You know, I think you've experienced that in Italy, for example, right? So to build a community, you need people actually helping build it. And what Nether Darkness did was try and go to Reddit to find these new people that are going to be able to help the community. But in the end, I just took a gap year, you know? <laughs> I just decided, whatever, I'm just going to stay in Greece, I'm just going to stay in Athens, I'm going to keep playing melee here, I'm also going to find work and just live my life in general, take a gap year for myself, abandon my studies for one year, then go back to it. And the community actually experienced a lot of growth because of that Reddit post and because we really tried hard to make this Greek scene a, a reality, you know? Yeah. Like, it's a real thing. Um, so I really tried that, and it just has been working out since then. That's much. awesome. I mean, of course, everybody in the scene is definitely glad to hear that, and anyone that saw that Reddit post will, will be happy with the update. And so just to talk a little bit about the growth of the scene, in the post, the, the, uh, at the time, the biggest tournament, it says it was 16 entrants. What are your entrance numbers like now in Greek? In Greece. Um, whenever we host a tournament in Athens and everybody tries to come, 
we usually get a lot of people for us you know a lot of people for us is around like 26 to 30 people um but in locals or in weeklies uh we don't get that many people you know the average you know has now become 16 where previously you know on the reddit post the maximum tournament the biggest tournament we ever had was 16. so that's growth right there right there already right but you know it's kind of a dark period right now again it's kind of like this this cycle this cycle of melee where people are interested in it and then they stop being interested for a while focus on their more like life things more like work related things relationship related things and then they miss it and they come back to it so we're kind of in that period where people are being fo- are focusing on other things right now right uh, so again, we don't have that many entrants. We don't have uh, that much attendance right now, uh, but we're trying to make it work. And it's still way better than what it was around one year ago where we posted that ready post, you know? Yeah, that's actually, that's great yeah. to hear at least. And just to kind of reference something that I know I've learned as, as a North American Smasher spending time in Europe, I've realized that some of the smaller scenes really are affected by... Uh, just people studying abroad and people who are not here in the same country for long periods of time. I know myself, I'm just in Italy for a year, but I've been playing with all of these guys. Does that happen in the Greek community as well? Do you see a kind of fluctuation depending on if the students are around? You know what? Actually, the number two and number four on the PR are players that are studying or are living abroad right now under certain circumstances. So number two is actually studying in the USA right now. And he's coming back often to play with us. The same goes for number four. And it's not, it's not, it's not only students studying abroad, right? It's, you know, we have uh, to go to army here in Greece, right? It's necessary. It's a requirement. Uh, that's also a big factor because we just lost like three to four players that are coming to each and every local just because of this requirement, right? Because they had to go to the army or, you know, stuff happens at work, you know, stuff happens at relationships. It's not really easy to deal with it and play melee, right? The same goes with studying. You have to spend a lot of time in melee. That's a harsh reality to deal with. But, you know, it's a thing you love. It's a thing you like to play, but... You have to spend a lot of time on it, right? And studying doesn't allow much time for fun, you know? I think you know that uh, better than most, right? So yes. you can't really be a student and be a, a, a very active part of your community. So uh, players that are studying abroad, especially, we have players leaving our country, right? The same thing I'm about to do next year. We have players leaving the country, going abroad, and so our community has backlashes from it, you know, especially in Greece, where it's a country where most young brains are leaving it because there's no future here for any young people. So most people are just leaving it to study abroad and we just have this huge community suffer from it, from like our economic condition. People are studying abroad and that's why melee doesn't work here. You know, it's kind of it's kind of weird how in Greece, the economic crisis is affecting a small Mele community of 30 people. It's insane to think about, you know? That, that so is... We just have, yeah, we just have a lot of people studying abroad, you know, just leaving the country to get work, to study, you know, to do all those kind of things that you can't do here properly. And this really hurts us as a community. Even though we're small, even though we don't have, like, any importance in society, even though, you know, we just like to have fun, it still hurts us that uh, people are leaving this country. That's, that's really interesting. And actually, it's a perspective a lot of players outside of Greece or outside of Europe wouldn't even really consider. And it's, it's unfortunate, but it's nice to see, or at least nice to hear that there has been some growth and to see that because you're aware of the problem, you guys are working against it and doing everything you can to try and benefit or grow the scene, which is important for everybody. And it's, it's definitely interesting. I'm going to thank you for that kind of perspective. 
So what I want to do now is I am going to take a break from the community and I'm going to talk about the painting. So the painting is actually titled Big Fish in a Small Pond. And I chose that title to not as an insult to you, but what it is is it's more of it's more of a challenge in a way. Because as we were talking before our interview here, you told me that this combo and this match exactly was kind of what cemented you as the number one player in Greece at the time. So in a way, what the title is really referencing, it's a sort of challenge to break out of that, which we have seen, or anyone that is familiar with you or has looks you up after this interview, they will be able to see that the traveling you have done, you have actually done rather well. So you're already on your way there, but I just wanted to use my title as a, maybe an extra push for you, who knows. And so to talk, to talk about the set a little bit more, I had already kind of hinted that it was about you becoming the best player. Could you let me know who you were playing against in this, in this painting? So the, the player I was playing against in the painting is Elkos, which was my rival at the time. And he's only 16, which is, uh, you know, very young to be playing such good melee, you know. Um, he's number three on the PR right now in Greece. And he's a really talented and good, you know, young brain uh, in the melee community right now. Uh, you talked about what importance this set had to me. It was more like a psychologically in my head thing, you know, because I really doubted myself. My rivalry at the time with him was that I was losing, right? I was losing to that guy. I was losing to a 16-year-old. And I was like, oh my god, what's going on here? Why, why can't I beat somebody that's two years younger than me? By the way, age doesn't matter, you know? Yes, of course. <laughs> I've, realized, I've realized that, uh, you know, further along the road. But at the time, I was being really skeptic about this matter, you know? I was trying to find a solution. And I just practiced, practiced really hard. I just, I was like, okay, I have mistakes, I have faults, I'm just gonna erase them by practicing. So I really wanted to prove to myself, not to others, that I could really just beat my rival. I really wanted to beat another person in this video game, you know? <laughs> I wanted to be better than him. So what happened was I just practiced, and this set was the result of all this practice. And of all this pressure I had put on myself during that actual set, I I choked so much. I had like even you could call it an an anxiety attack. You know, uh, the same thing that happened with another player recently in Genesis Four. Luigi Some, Ken. Yeah, uh, I really couldn't move my hands. I couldn't feel my fingertips and I, I just had to stand up for some reason because otherwise blood wouldn't go to my legs. That's how I felt uh, during uh, the moment of your painting right there. Uh, that's how I was feeling. And what happened was all this practice just rushed in. Uh, the, the, the result of this practice just showed itself and you know I just beat him. And in my head, it was over. I was better than him and that's it. Um, you know, six months have passed from this set, and the skill the skill gap has only increased. You know, in my head, it's it's fixed. It's, it's just done. You know, <laughs> I did it. That's it. Um, so yeah, the painting you have right there is actually the last talk of the game. Yes. That's why I feel it's so important to me because I did something risky, and it paid off. Right. So I feel. This relationship of risk paying off, I never felt it before in my life because I'm generally a very safe person. I only take safe decisions. But in a video game, I played it more risky and that really paid off. So it goes to show how, you know, <laughs> you can try out a lot of stuff you haven't tried out in life in just, you know, a video game, in just, you know, a single second, a split decision uh, can really change the, w the, the, the way you think, your mental game. And this painting you've done, this frame you've shown is exactly that. How my mentality has changed just from a split decision I took at the time. Um, it's really amazing to think about, you know, how much this thing has affected not just my melee, but 
my real life in all the ways like i think better now i think more clearly it's amazing like i don't know that's that's really awesome to hear and it's it's great like i think all of the melee players out there they do know that melee in a way does affect their real life and it does change them but it's really interesting to hear just this first person account and you know as i was re uh, as i made the tasks of the combo i i thought it was hilarious because it starts with two stomps and it ends with two stomps, which is just, it was just perfect. And it was, it was so much fun to task and to kind of get a read into what you guys were doing and thinking it's, it was great. And I'm really glad that we had spoken before this about what moment that really meant a lot to you. And I'm, yeah. and I'm really happy that you do, uh, that you approve of how it turned out, which is, which is great. And I thank you. But, um, I yeah. really love your paintings, man. They're really good. <laughs> Thank you. And that's just, just the beginning, right? It's uh, what I'm in school for. So we're getting there. And so just to talk about your current skill level now, I wanted to kind of reference what some European players might know, that uh, you had a close set with Adam from the Netherlands at Syndicate last year. And that was the Syndicate with West Balls, I believe, the, one of the bigger ones. And so there was that close set and the tournament that you placed 33rd. And then you came to Italy and you beat some of their players that have been playing three or four times as long as you have. And so what people will see when they go follow these sets or they go check out some of the sets that or highlight videos that you have on YouTube, they're gonna see a lot of pop-offs. Nice read. And that's it. And some, some sometimes not so uh, not the best kind of reactions to the game. Oh God. Give up, right? No. <laughs> Holy oh. shit! Holy shit! Rook controller. <laughs> Holy wow. shit! I want to talk about that a little bit and how. So we mentioned that you're affected in your real life and the game. And that also, you're a player that it actually, it very much comes out, whether it be in celebration or disappointment. Uh, people know or people recognize you maybe from the GR Smash video of Throne Controllers, or I, I've seen even just YouTube comments that it's like, oh, he didn't throw his controller. It's, it's, it's kind of interesting. How do you feel after the sets and what kind of prompts you to make those physical decisions or reactions you know what this is really where your title of the painting comes in you know and this is why i think you've chosen an excellent title for this painting big fish in a small pond you know you might be the biggest fish in your pond but you never know how big you really are you know i have this constant doubt in my head about my skill level i talk with people online and they say i'm trash you know because most people you know that just say they're good online people answer that they're trash, you know. I have these thoughts, you know, these voices in my head telling me you're not good, you're not good, you're not gonna make it. Um, that's why I get very emotional over it. I I really get, you know, emotionally charged before a tournament. I really think about it a lot. I really think about what each result would mean, right? What each victory means, what which loss means to me as a melee player. And, you know, sometimes it works out, sometimes it doesn't. And that's my mentality right now. Um, most people, you know, from the GR Smash video, it was actually from Germany, where I got fifth in a kind of local, you know, just a fourth person tournament. And I was really, really disappointed in myself. Because I was a big fish in a small pond. But the real pond, you know, was way bigger than me, right? It didn't even matter. My skill level was irrelevant. But I thought I was good. And that's why I was so mad at myself. How could I let myself, you know, not practice enough just because I thought I was good. And the same thing, you know, happened in Italy. Where I had to play Avenger Angel, the Grand Finals. And, you know, he beat me first set. And then again, the thoughts from losing, the, the thoughts from, you know, doubting myself just came back all over me at once. And... I had this mentality that 
um, I was going to lose and that it was going to be a repetition and I was going to be very mad. And again, I'm just going to blame me not practicing. So, you know, players that don't have access to playing good players or to playing players better than them, you know, they really, I really can't judge how good I am right now. So what happened in Avengers of Grand Final Set 2 was I just said, all right, I'm just going to play this game that I love and I'm just going to try and make it work, you know, because it either works or it doesn't and I can't really change that much right now. So I'm just going to enjoy the moment. And since I've changed my mentality uh, to that, uh, you know, mentality thing, it was really worked out, you know. I ended up winning versus Avenger Angel set two, and um, I guess I still am a big fish in a small pond, but um, I can compare myself better to other players. Yes. Uh, This is the really hard uh, thing about playing in Origin where no one plays with you. I can't compare myself with others. You know, I see sets of Captain Falcons on YouTube. Um, I don't know if I can compare with them or not. I don't know if I'm good enough. Uh, I don't know anything about this game, actually, just because I can only talk to 10 people with this game in real life, right? So, yeah, this is what goes through my head uh, whenever I play tournament sets. I go outside to play melee if i come back with a defeat i'm gonna be really disappointed in myself so that's why i try to practice a lot and avoid that you know because i have not only am i worse than them not only am i not equal with them i'm actually worse than them right so i have to do some catching up and that goes you know it's insane pressure for me. I don't know. It's actually the most pressure I've ever put on myself ever. When I went to Italy, for example, and in my head, I wanted, I was supposed to win, right? Or when I went to Germany and I was supposed to win, but there I didn't make it, you know? So, yeah, that pretty much all ties up to your excellent title for your painting. Well, I'm always glad to hear that that works out. And it's, it's really interesting because you're kind of like the... Whenever someone's online, if it's on Reddit, on Twitter, and they're asking players how do they improve, and that travel, it's, it's really important. And you're kind of somebody that shows that. But also in a similar sense, you are winning when you travel, which a lot of people, that doesn't happen usually. When, like the fir- usually someone's first major, they don't do that well, or their first time out of. So at least, it, it, it's, really, it's really cool to see that you have the mentality that is kind of worse or that is the typical mentality but your results are better than the typical results so it's really interesting and it's exciting for me and i'm sure it's exciting for any of the other community to hopefully start seeing you do better and better and you know i'm sure you're going to be encouraged to travel more and you said you are actually moving away for school where are you going to be studying um in the uk um haven't really decided yet, but somewhere in the UK, so I will have a lot of resources for Mele. Yeah, you know, okay. As far as Mele goes, the UK is a really resourceful area, you know? A lot of top players I can play with, you know, and really enjoy the game there. Right, so wherever you end up, hopefully you'll be playing Mele and we'll still be hearing from you. And so I think that's actually going to wrap up most of uh, the questions I've got for you. Uh, what I do want to do now is... is can you just give us some of the links on people that are interested in watching your play, maybe watching the tournaments in Greece? So just like, are there any Facebook links or Twitch links that you'd want me to include in the video? You know, the the first and probably only link I want people to follow is of the Greek uh, Smash Bros community, right? So if you just go to Greek Smash Bros Melee on Facebook, uh, you're going to find it. And it's pretty much our baby, you know. This group is our baby. We just put, we just post everything on it, uh, in it about Greece, you know. So just if you can check it out there, um, it's gonna be fine. You know, I have a Twitch and I have a Twitter as well, but I don't really care about those things right now. <laughs> I'm not a good enough of a player to care about those things right now. So That's I don't no really worries. Care about them. Yeah, just search up the group, and uh, you know, you'll find everything you ever ask the question for about Greek melee, you know? Or you can just add me on Facebook and, you know, we can just, you can ask me anything. All right. Anything you want. Yeah. That's great. And so 
The last thing I will, or I do want to know is where are we going to see you next or where will you be uh, taking names next when you travel for tournaments? So I'm planning to go to Avalon, the, the March Avalon. Uh, I think it's on the 4th of March or something. Uh, and, you know, there I get to play Adam again. Right. It's been six months since that set happened. And I think I really improved from there. You also have a lot of other good players there. Um, what also I'm going to be doing is probably, depending on the results of Avalon, because that's how I go. You know, in Italy, if I did well, I was going to go to another tournament soon. And this another tournament soon is Avalon. You know, in Avalon, if I do well, I'm going to go in another tournament soon. And this next tournament is probably going to be H Flan, which uh, really interesting tournament comes out of nowhere for Melee. You know, because usually Edge Flan is uh, popular for other games. But for Melee, it's a first. And I really look forward to attending that if, you know, I do well at Avalon. Right. What's really important and I, what I should really focus on right now. All right. So the first thing will be Avalon. And then uh, we'll be able to keep up with you and see where you show up next. Yeah. All right. So I want to give you a big thanks for sitting down with me and talking about the Greek scene and your own personal growth in the game. And I hope it's really encouraging for anybody out there that is in a small scene or in one of these small countries in Europe to kind of reach out and to, to kind of look up to the success that you guys have had. And just even, even therefore, if it's a lack of success, if it's just the growth and paying attention to that is what's really important to me personally in the Smash scene, and it's great to see. So I want to thank you again, and I will uh, hopefully I'll see you at HFLAN. <laughs> yeah, dude, thanks for including me in your uh, interview series. They're really great, and, you know, the paintings are just, you know, mind-blowing. <laughs> thanks a lot, <laughs> the man. The paintings you do are insanely good. I can't even describe it. Just look at it. <laughs> thank All you right. very much. Hey guys, thanks for sticking around to the end of the video. I just have a few house cleaning things I want to mention while the time lapse finishes. As you can see, I chose not to edit a condensed version of this interview, but if you're interested in that coming back in the future, please let me know in the comments. And for anyone that's going to be attending Beast 7 this coming weekend, I'm actually going to be there myself, and with me I'll have about 30 prints of my paintings. Now how you can get these prints is we can sit down and have a money match. So if I win, you pay 5 euros or 50 krona, depending on what you have on you. But you get the print, and if you win, you get the print for free. So you can find me by looking for this sign that I'm going to have posted on my bag, or this hat that I'll be wearing. See you guys there, and I'll see you in my next video. Ciao!